Former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher provides a voice case study for British Impressionist Steve Nallen. This is Thatcher in 1960, when she was a new member of Parliament. Oh, very much so. I've done a good deal of other speaking, but speaking in the House of Commons is quite different. It's a unique experience. It really is because of... of the What's really interesting about Thatcher here, I mean, she's so young, she's in her early 30s, and uh, for anybody, you know, in their early 30s, your voice is always a lot younger sounding. And it really is very, very high up here. Over the years, that was brought lower because it doesn't sound as good. It sounds patronizing. Very, very high. Fast forward to the year 1983, and she has just won a second term as prime minister. I think we shall have to make up our minds about the cabinet very quickly, because otherwise the press will discuss it all for me. She's learned, as a politician, that that high sound is not going to help get her elected, and that, did I say it, even husky, sexy voice just might appeal. Evidence can be found, though, that despite Mrs. Thatcher's suspected coaching, we have to move these to open the road. Her natural voice would often reassert itself. I must say, I can't stand those who carp and criticize when they ought to be congratulating Britain on a magnificent achievement. And now, uh, uh, at this stage in her premiership, although the voice was very low, it's been sort of trained to be low. Just wait a little more patiently. After all, not all the results are in yet. When she gets excited, those old shrillness keeps coming back. I can't stand those who carp and criticize. One person who observed her more closely than almost anyone else is the man who voiced her spitting image puppet and impersonated her for over 30 years. Uh, please, sir. Thank you. Geoffrey, mm -hmm. this is a French one. She was never beaten, really, and she had different techniques, so uh, depending on the question. What a stupid question! Immediately putting the interviewer off their guard. And then that other technique, as she was thinking how to reply to the question, those eyes would open, and then it would be like, trust in me, the snake from the jungle book, trust in me. And, of course, the pauses looked as if, goodness me, she was going to make a very, very sincere point. She was probably just thinking of the next thing to say. But nevertheless, that was there. But the most creepy, perhaps, was when she got a little flirty. Goodness me, Mr. Snow, you're looking very, very good. I rather like that tie. It's a shame you don't wear blue ties more often than those rather silly pink ones. John Snow, ITN. Washington.